Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to the Drupal Association Town Hall to talk a little bit about what uh, the format for this is. This is just a question and answer session. There's not a big presentation here. We just have some uh, opportunity to speak with uh, some of the leaders of the association and to um, uh, just answer any questions that the community may have. So I have some questions that we've prepared in advance, um, but if anybody in the audience would like to ask questions, please line up at the microphone as the question occurs to you, um, and then we can move forward um, and listen to those. Uh, just do make sure that you're at the microphone so that it is recorded. So um, we'll get right into it, I think. So the first questions are by way of introduction. Um, so for Heather, uh, could you introduce yourself and tell us uh, just about your story in nonprofit organizations and technology before joining the DA? Sure. And Tim, you have a fabulous recorded voice, by the way. Yeah, Thank perfect. You. Didn't Thank see you. It for this. I noticed that today at the Dries note, and I was thinking Tim's got the possibility of a second career. Right. Yeah, no, I've been voice practicing overs. my radio voice. It's voice good. Overs. <laughs> so, hi, I'm Heather Rocker, and I'm about four months in uh, on the gig of executive director. I have a, an interesting background in that I'm about 50% nonprofit and 50% corporate uh, consulting, to be specific. So my nonprofit background is primarily to do with women in technology and then also issues around women and girls. So I've spent a lot of time in the diversity and inclusion space. Um, and in a consulting role, I've been heavily embedded in technology. So my back educational background is in industrial engineering, which put me into power supply consulting, where I learned a lot about running large spreadsheets um, if you're interested in buying a power plant, I can help you evaluate uh, what you should bid on that. So, um, you know, if we want to go into that line of service at the Drupal Association to get funding, that's an option. Um, but it's nice. So this is a nice the combination. State of California can use that. Right. Shouldn't that be unrelated income? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tax implications. So it's, this, is, this is a really interesting place for me to apply a lot of uh, different skills and pull them together. And so I love... Utilizing all my nonprofit business knowledge, uh, I've run exclusively volunteer organizations, so this is a fun fit with that as well. And then, of course, being able to have enough of a technology conversation to not feel like a complete idiot, so that engineering background <laughs> comes, into, comes into play. But there is a wall I'll hit where I'll give you a signal that you've lost me. Um, yeah, that's me. Awesome. Thank you, Heather. Uh, so to you, Adam, could you introduce yourself as well and just sort of tell us the story of how you came to be involved in Drupal? Sure. Uh, so uh, hi, everybody. My name's Adam Goodman. I uh, chair the board of directors uh, for the Drupal Association. It's nice to meet everybody. Uh, we've got a couple of other board of director member plants in the audience. So uh, uh, when we don't know an answer, we'll be staring at them and hoping that they do. Uh, I've been the board chair for uh, a couple of years in my uh, in, in my day job, as it were. I'm actually a professor at Northwestern University, which is uh, in the States, uh, uh, just uh, in Chicago, uh, and just north of uh, the city of Chicago. Uh, I'm uh, at the McCormick School of Engineering, which is obviously an engineering school, although I am not an engineer, I wouldn't lay claim to that. Uh, my uh, academic area is actually uh, leadership and organizations, uh, so I work with a lot of leaders uh, globally and help them to become even better leaders, and uh, that's where my research is focused. I particularly uh, specialize in how people learn how to become more effective leaders, probably more than you wanted to know about an academic background. The, uh, how I got involved in, in Drupal is that um, it's, it's kind of a fun story that is at the intersection of Northwestern uh, and, uh, and technology is uh, there's a group of student-run businesses. So these are businesses that are, um, you know, selling cake, birthday cakes. You know, that parents would call, you know, want to order a cake for their uh, for their child, kind of thing. Uh, or doing uh, delivery before uh, you know before uh, apps and delivery existed, kind of thing. So at any rate, uh, one of the other uh, advisory board members to this group, I was this faculty advisor. And one of the other uh, 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 members uh, is somebody by the name of Tiffany Ferris, who I know is, uh, is relatively well known in the Drupal community. And she came to me, I want to say about eight, maybe 10 years ago, and said, so we've got this board. I know you know a lot about governance. We're not particularly well governed. Um, and we would like to get better at it. Um, we're maturing and growing fast. And 
trying to figure out how to do a, a good job at that. And could you just come and help facilitate a meeting and uh, and help the board think more about what governance should look like, uh, the scale of the association that we have, and, and help to catch up. So that's how I got to know. Uh, so that's how I got to know, Dru know Drupal. Uh, and over time, I've learned that um, many of the websites I touch are actually powered by Drupal and sort of who knew? <laughs> uh, by the way, including Northwestern University. So there we go. My alma mater also on Drupal, Georgia Tech. I checked. I was going to have to disavow them if they weren't. <laughs> Awesome, cool. I'll give a quick introduction to myself, although I think uh, a number of folks know me. So, um, Tim Lennon, Hestinet on Drupal.org, and now the CTO with the Drupal Association. Um, like many people who've been around Drupal for a long time, I actually started just freelancing with Drupal. I used it as a way to pay for my college tuition. Um, it paid for a small fraction of my college tuition, as you might expect, but it did eventually become kind of part of my career. And then about five years ago, I had the opportunity to go work for the association with the engineering team and have been there ever since. So yeah, that's me. So uh, since we don't have anyone at the mic yet, I'm going to go through a few more questions if that we have. questions, we promise we don't like. Yeah, awesome. Um, so Heather, uh, to get some kind of outside perspective, since you're four months on the job, can you talk about what you see from other nonprofit experience are the unique challenges of an open source nonprofit um, or open source technology for that matter? So, what I think is unique um, but also powerful is the mission behind the Drupal Association as a nonprofit itself, right? So, you don't often see a nonprofit set up to promote a product in a community um, of which it has varying ties. Uh, and intricacies. So it's an interesting blend of what does the nonprofit itself bring to the table versus what the community does versus what business leaders do and how does that all intersect. So it's not as cut and dry as we raise money to do X. It's, it's very complicated, but I think what makes it complicated also makes it exciting, right? So there are a lot of things that we can do, and I think the fact that it is predominantly a volunteer-run community, that we do intersect with individuals, with businesses, with governments, with educational institutions, allows us a lot of opportunities to engage in different ways. Um, where I think that we can learn from the nonprofit community that is more traditional is some of the structure around volunteer recruitment and management. So I'll give you an example. I just left the local association roundtable, and probably not surprisingly, their top concern is how do we recruit and retain volunteers because we'll get a handful of them, we'll burn them out, not intentionally, um, and, and then we lose that talent and thought leadership and we have to start over. So. What we talked about were some structures that exist today that help organizations function very well that we can use with our event organizers group, with our camp structures, with local associations, where we adopt some of that volunteer management best practice so that not only we avoid burning out the volunteers that we have, we learn how to uh, recognize them in the best way possible, but we also look at succession planning so leaders can kind of come in and move up and move through, and you constantly have recruitment of new talent. And the nice thing about that is when you recruit people into roles other than leading an organization, you get that next generation of Drupal. So it helps us solve a few things at one time. Awesome, thank you. So um, I'm going to pick on your academic background again, Adam. So um, in the like kind of field of literature about leadership or about the kind of economic development of technology organizations, is there, I kind of know the answer, so this is slightly a trick question, but is there existing academic literature about open source or open source leadership? Um, there, so uh, th there is some literature. Um, and um, to me, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's interesting, and again, I don't know how much you care to know, um, <laughs> but uh, to me, what's interesting is the, the concept of open source and the ecosystem in particular that Drupal has built um, is, is really fascinating uh, to study. So if I'm running an organization, um, and we like to think about organizations not being hierarchical, not being top down, and that sort of thing, but the reality is that we all sort of end up looking up, even though we don't think we should be looking up, right, to figure out what's the direction that I should be receiving. And, you know, 
do my priorities align with the priorities of the of the organization, and or my sort of following in, in, in the way that I, that I should be following. And to me, what's really interesting about open source um, is that it is uh, obviously yes, there's trees as the project lead, um, but it turns out. If you don't show up, he has no followers. And you know, the question is sort of what compels people to engage. And when there's a group of developers or whoever that get together and say, we want to build this this thing, wherever that feature is. And you know, when Dries stands up, I probably shouldn't be saying this because we're going to get in trouble with Dries. But when Dries stands up like he did at the, at the Dries note this morning and says. You know, these are the four paths or five paths that we want to follow to the top of the mountain for eight or for nine kind of thing. Um, in the nicest possible way, we're all kind of hoping that others say, yes, we agree, and we'll show up and contribute and make that happen. Um, uh, and so for me, as, a, as, a, as an academic, it's, it's you know, very interesting to think about so how do, you, how do you engage people? How do you, how do you grab sort of the hearts and minds pieces of that so that people see value and want to contribute uh, and see a sense of community and want to contribute? So in some ways, Drupal is much more akin to a community association um, than it is to sort of an organized software enterprise. Um, and in some ways, because of the, and, and sort of the uh, piece to me that is even more interesting is the, is the global nature of those contributions. Um, so in, I, if I have the advantage of geography, right, we're all living in a neighborhood, we're all living in a particular area, then it's a little easier to organize and, and keep things together. But somehow, Drupal has been able to build uh, really this best of breed community um, that is, you know, yeah, sometimes we look at the inside and it's, you know, we think, oh, this isn't working or that isn't working, it sure would be nice to have this, or we've got this conflict going on in the community, whatever it is kind of thing. So it's, it's easy as an insider, I think, to, to think to yourself, well, we're not doing so good. But if you look at what Drupal has accomplished, both on the technology side, but also on the community side, it really is an astonishing story. What, what the things that we do around, you know, if you just look at something like the community working group, um, if you if you if you just look at the security team. So here we have, we were talking about this this weekend. Um, we we run software that is widely acknowledged as being among the most secure on the internet, right? And it is done through volunteers. How do you get that? Right? We're not sitting there with, you know, a, you know, a hundred million dollar security budget. We're sitting there with volunteers who have to, you know, pay for their own T-shirts and hats. <laughs> uh, to me, that's 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 truly amazing. Awesome, thank you. We have our first customer. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I came with another question, which I will ask you. But uh, to your, uh, mm -hmm. what you were just saying, actually. Um, makes me wonder, I'm Brad Jones, by the way, I'm from Denver, Colorado, I'm a freelancer, that's my story. Um, I, I will maybe challenge a little bit the idea, uh, and probably, uh, I think we're speaking the same language, but maybe just different terminology, like much of the, uh, much of the important like security team work, like Drees, all that kind of thing, that's a lot of that is sponsored work, right? It's volunteer in the sense that they're not getting a salary from the Drupal Association. Uh, and like uh, Greg Nadison, who is a fellow Denverite, like he's on the security team, and, right. and his you know his current job doesn't really even care, I think, if he's on the security team or not. Yeah. You know? So there is some true volunteer. That's just right. Like, that's the range. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Right. And so um, my question on that is sort of like. I think you know Dries is in, in a unique position that a lot of projects have, where he's the founder. He created this thing in his pajamas in his dorm room. Uh, could you maybe talk a little bit about? I'm sure the DA's probably talked about like succession planning. Like, when is the right time for Dries not to be the project lead, right? And what does that look like? Because 
you know, and he's even coined his own, I mean, it's like, it's the Dries note. It's not the keynote, it's not the, you know, it's the Dries note, so it's very synonymous with him. So maybe you kind of get the point of my question, like, what is, you know, because we, I don't think any of us want Drupal to be like, Dries' thing, and he, you know, when he like gets hit by a bus one day, we just don't know what we're gonna do anymore because Dries isn't gonna tell us in the Dries note, right? So uh, I'm happy to respond. I don't know, uh, sort of, but, but I just don't want to preempt. You know. My response was going to be, we're looking for whoever has that exact hair. <laughs> <laughs> and then we know we've found the chosen one. Adam's answer is probably dramatically different. So, <laughs> so that's Tim Holt. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him to apply. <laughs> so uh, one of the uh, one of one of the things that that gives me comfort, and by the way, I, you know, my sense of working with Dries fairly closely um, uh, over, the, over the last few years in particular, uh, but certainly having uh, worked with him one-on-one uh, -on -one over the past eight or ten years is, you know, his, his passion and commitment is, is sort of, is undimmed, right? It, it's, it's, it's strong, it's powerful, it's effective. Um, so uh, I'm not sitting here thinking to myself, you know, you know, when's the kind of when's the end uh, sort of thing, because because I don't have any sense at all that we're anywhere close to that. What is interesting about uh, Dries is that he does not carry, and I can say this as um, somebody who knows this field a little bit, um, he doesn't carry uh, with him many of the. Um, challenges that afflict founders. Um, and so, you know, sort of the, the, the signals that you want to look for that would certainly give me pause are the story is always about him. Um, it, we don't see that, right? He's always, he, he's good about sort of lifting up the community and recognizing and, and validating the, the, the contributions of others and asking for help. Um, the, the second sort of indicator that you would look for is a desire to uh, control as many decisions as possible. Um, and uh, again, it's not a pattern that, that, I, that, I, that I've seen with Dries. Uh, does he have a view kind of thing? Yes. Certainly in, you know, for example, our board meetings, he's very careful to be the last person to weigh in, um, which um, is sort of a funny thing to talk about, but obviously what it does is it, it creates space for everybody else in the room to be able to share their opinions, thoughts, ideas, and that kind of thing. And on many issues, he's actually pretty silent uh, because he has a, he has that he has that sense to know that kind of once I say something, people are going to sort of are likely to galvanize for that. So he so he, he uses his power or influence lightly rather than rather than rather than in a heavy manner um, and you know a th there's many more but sort of a, a, a third indicator um, that would that would kind of worry me is a reluctance to give up you know sort of roles and responsibility and if you track you know sort of Drupal and the community over the last three or four years it's actually shedding responsibilities not keeping them um, and Obviously, as a play towards you know understanding something around succession, what I've not said this to you, so I mean, so I want to be very careful here. But that last piece I think is actually pretty important because in a corporate setting, and I want to be very clear, Drupal is not a corporate setting; it's a community. But in a corporate setting, if you're looking for if you're going to do succession planning right. Basically, what you're going to do is have uh, three people inside of your organization and three people outside of your organization. That's sort of best practice. Who you are actively sort of staying engaged with on the internal side, you're actually actively cultivating them, so that when that leader leaves, you have multiple choices. And um, what I see us doing, and I mean us, not just Drees, is working to create more leadership opportunities for more people so that when Dries, you know, steps away or, you know, something else happens that is more sudden kind of thing, that there is, uh, it's not just sort of who's the next person, 
I actually think that's a mistake. Um, I, I think it's much more about who were the next sort of rung of people who could step in and not necessarily do so to, to fill exactly the role that Therese has. Um, I think what we want is a, is a much broader sense of resilience around that. Um, and, and again, my view is, consciously or not, that's exactly what we're creating. Does that answer your question? Yeah, no, it's a good answer. And I mean, uh, he's not the executive director, he's not the chairman of the board. So, like, the position of, like, project lead, like, you could split that up and it could be something else. Yeah, so. Yeah, exactly. Things, you know, like the CWG reported to him up until uh, a year ago, yeah. whatever it was, two years ago. And, you know, now it's. Part, all all it's, the new charters are rolling up to the Drupal Association. So, you're, that, when we talk about kind of structural shift, I'd be more concerned about a gap if the association didn't exist. But I think that you do have a layer through the association for some continuity where I don't feel as worried about there being a catalytic event that would that would cause Drupal to be unsuccessful in some way. And I'll, I'll add one more note on that front, which is that we know we have other clear leaders in the community. I mean, there's people who are like tremendously influential of their own right. One of them is sitting in this room over there. Hi, Gabor. <laughs> Um, and That's why we came here so that we can say that. <laughs> no, but and people like Angie and all, all these folks in our community who are leaders and who are leaders to large groups of folks. I mean, ironically, when I was telling my own Drupal origin story, I was pretty sure that Angie Byerman was like pretty much the leader of the whole project when I first joined. Like, she was the active person who yeah. was my inspiration and kind of uh, mentor coming in. So I think we have the kinds of people who would be, you know, again, not in the same sort of leadership role, but who are already in leadership roles that logically um, make sense. Now I'm nervous because I see which faces we have. Are you like comment on this one? By the way, I think it's, I'm really glad you asked the question. Yeah. It's so, hi, so I'm Gabor. So that's part of the reason why we did the Monday keynotes, yeah. is to highlight all the leaders that are actually involved in doing this stuff and making, they're actually making the decisions for most of the things that happen in Drupal Core. And then Dries comes on and shows off all the nice things that those people decided and made happen. Yeah. So um, that's why we put them on stage to humanize the the that 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 group of leadership that already m makes stuff happen. Absolutely. And believe me, I, and I, I could point to other leaders to stay on that theme who would have said, "Absolutely, we are not doing that because the show needs to be about me." Right. Hi, my name is Matthew Saunders. Um, I'm, I've been uh, involved in the Drupal uh, community since 2006. Um, um, I am the director of the uh, of Drupal Camp Colorado. I've um, uh, been involved with that since 2007. Um, I was an association board member for two and a half years um, as a, an at-large member. Um, and I am super interested in what Mike Lamb was talking about today. Um, in the video of the, uh, what's it called, uh, the community recognition program and how that, uh, how that will work. And my, my, uh, my sort of reasoning for, for being super interested in that is that my contributions, while I've done, I've got a few code contributions, my contributions have largely not been code. Um, and um, they go long uh, and deep into the, into the community. Um, and for a very long time, those kinds of contributions weren't weren't um, weren't uh, necessarily valued in the same way as uh, as code, um, and and I would argue that if if uh, if uh, Drupal as a code base were to disappear entirely, the community that's been built around the software would likely survive because of the friendships, the bonds, the the uh, the uh, the um, um, you know the way that people's careers have bound themselves, you know, bound them, bound them together. So I'm really interested in hearing a little bit more about that, uh, about that program and how people can get involved to help. So I think that's an excellent point in that you cannot have a robust, effective volunteer organization and not appropriately and effectively recognize volunteers for what they bring to the table. And so while code is obviously very important, to your point there's more to it that makes Drupal what it is. And, you know, I think we, we heard the message loud and clear, and there were already some things in place 
where volunteers could submit non-code contributions. Part of what we need to do now is just make it easier to find it, to to be able to go through those systems, to to be able to kind of self, you know, self-populate that information so that we have it. And so that's that's the challenge that we're trying to take on. And so while I would love to pop up my PowerPoint about how this is all exactly going to work. I want to point to um, when Mike said we're kicking this off and we're thinking about it and we want your input, that's truly where we are. So what I didn't want to do was have the Drupal Association go off into a room and chart out what we thought was the right plan, only to be told very vehemently that we had it all wrong when we rolled it out to the community. Um, so it very much is thought leadership from the board level, the staff level, community leaders and everything in between. because. We want to make sure that we get it as right as possible, and we know there's a lot to that. To your point about what you do not only has a long history, but you've been deeply involved. So there's different levels of I showed up to a camp, and I helped run a session room, and I took attendance and I went home, versus I organized a camp and it bled me dry <laughs> for a year emotionally because I was so invested in, in what was happening. And we need to be able to recognize the difference in that from a recognition standpoint. So that's partly what complicates what we're trying to do, but also makes it more powerful. And so that's really the approach we're trying to take as we move forward. Yeah, and speaking to how to get involved and in things that are going on. So um, on drupal.org slash contribution dash credit, um, there is a, a link to a form if you want to be involved in the committee itself that's going to sort of help us govern what the weights and measures and types of contributions are that we recognize. There's also an issue for suggesting here's an activity that we do that should be recognized by the community. Um, and there's some preliminary work in terms of the kind of technical underpinnings of, of how we want to do this and how we want to make it as frictionless as we can. Um, because it's, it's not going to help if you're going to have to fill out a 10-page uh, yeah, report before you can get credit for any of your work. It needs to be real simple um, in order to do that. And it needs some, some careful control. And um, there's kind of two really key elements to this. Um, Mike spoke to this uh, when we were discussing it a little bit privately. One is we need to measure everything well, but then we need to understand what impact measuring it and giving weights to things has on the contribution economy around Drupal and how we're making those choices. So there's a lot, of, a lot of work to be done there, but it's something we're really considering. And I just want to add, I think I have one core contribution in my entire history. Like I'm a project manager by trade, so I'm in, an, in that same category. And I think you know everybody here is in that category of people who contribute a huge amount, but not in the ways that are traditionally recognized. So um, I think I may go back to my questions. If we don't currently have a follow-up. No, I just want to add, for me, that was one of the, I was really pleased that it was in the Dries note. I was, I was really pleased that, you know, that, that the DA is taking this on. Um, and I want to make sure that we take time to, um, to get input from the community. Um, there's a part of me that is, you know, like every day that goes by that people are contributing and not being recognized for that contribution that is a little bit of a lost day. Um, so I want to, so I want to stand up something as quickly as we possibly can, and know that it's probably not going to be perfect. But I think the friction and easy part will, you know, will sort of hopefully dominate at the at the front end, and then we can make it, you know, sort of more complete. I don't yeah. know if that's the right. Part. I don't know that it'll ever be complete, but we'll exactly. continue to iterate on it. Yeah, yeah I, I think I think it's going to be a continuing kind of kind of thing. But if we it, I, my hope is that you know we get it sort of mostly right out of the box, and then we get it just kind of more and more right over time, and that people are able to. I think about you know, just up the street from me, literally two blocks from my office, is where um, um, is where uh, uh, George and Tiffany's company Palantir is, and you know George is. Um, is you know, a volunteer at the CWG. Uh, Tiffany was our treasurer for a long time, right? And both of them get zero credit. She got her first credit from our camp. <laughs> That's right. right. Yeah. 
That's right. That's very reasonable. Um, and and uh, and that actually is sort of a good follow-on to to uh, to what we've been doing. We've been creating tickets on D.O. Uh, for everything. Like we, so we've got a project for the camp, and we create tickets for any kind of activity that somebody might be involved in, and that's how we're making sure that people who do things like show up for meetings or or or, uh, or help uh, help at the registration table or whatever. For the camp, or, or getting some some level of credit, because a lot of the people who are volunteering are are, uh, are designers and project managers, and you know, and that's a natural thing. Like for project managers, it's a really natural thing for them to want to help do the uh, the organization of events and so on, right? Yeah. Um, so I'm I'm really super happy to hear that 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 uh, that there's a, a sense that this is going to become more mature. Yeah, and I would like so there to be some you. form of reward or recognition mechanism that. Yeah, encourage you. And I was going to say, it's, it's great that you're doing that. We need more people to do that in the interim. The problem that I heard was either people didn't even realize that was an opportunity to create a ticket and to do it, or they went and looked, and it was so convoluted that they just kind of backed away slowly and said, I'll, I'll forget about it after all. I think so. a, that's a communication issue, though. Like that's, that's, that's something that um, I could easily be managed by... by uh, uh, putting out a communication that says, here are the three steps to... to uh, right. Yeah. To, to repeat that back for the sake of the recording, um, as Matt was saying, like it's a, it's a communication issue that we can communicate the existing ways that you can create community projects, not just code projects on Drupal.org, and credit in all the same ways. Yeah, please. Uh, so on the topic of communication, um, I had sort of a, like interesting exchange in a uh, Drupal.org infrastructure ticket a few, like maybe a month ago, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, I logged on to Drupal.org to do work, and up pops a very uh, prominent, unavoidable, click to make it go away banner about the global climate strike day. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't expect it to be a popular opinion, especially in the EU, but um, that's not really my jam, mm -hmm. and I don't. When I give money to the Drupal Association, I don't, you know, I expect certain things, but I don't necessarily expect politics. Um, it's the same kind of thing with Mozilla. Like I disagree with Mozilla on, you know, net neutrality, uh, but they're very active with it, and I can debate whether my dollar that goes to Mozilla, you know, I enjoy that. But um, you know, I am a member of the Drupal Association, and I can come to a town hall meeting about it. So. I'm just kind of, you know, I think uh, those kinds of things, and I had the exchange in the ticket was basically like, you know, I was like, where did this come from? Did this just sort of happen, you know? And the response was like, yeah, I got put up the flagpole at the Drupal Association, and everybody in the office is kind of cool with it, you know, is more or less the, uh, and I, I, that's a paraphrase, I'm not trying to put words in people's mouth, but, um, you yeah, know, and it went down to two days later or something like that, and there was also a, issue raised about how those kinds of banners, and I think it's happened before, like negatively affect the accessibility of the site because you have to click to make it go away and it's worse on mobile and that kind of thing. So I guess I'm just sort of conveying the thought that there's lots of stuff that I think the Drupal Association has on its list to do, um, wading into you know, encouraging people to strike on climate strike day is not something I think is sort of in the wheelhouse and I think, you know, if other if people want to support that, they've got other avenues in the Drupal associations. Maybe not the not the place where we should be doing that. So it's an interesting conversation, and, and I want to make sure that we're clear that uh, as much as we do sit around the office and talk about those things, we actually don't have an office, so we do it. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where these are truly not issues that we come up with from an, a staff perspective. These are issues that bubble up from the community and are, are important to the community. And so there's a lot we have to weigh in any association or organization, right? So it's like, of all the things that bubble up, you know, where do you, where do you interact and, and where do you act or not act? Um, we got a, a lot of similar pushback about Pride Month. Um, but it's interesting because there are, there are things that, that are important to the community that when we talk about diversity and inclusion, there are gonna be things where we as an association and as a community feel strongly um, you know, with Global Strike, it was actually, we actually had a pretty big community push uh, for us to take action on some of those things. So I think what we, what we have the opportunity to do as a community is say, you know, what is important and to whom. The issue is we're global, 
So different things matter to different people. And what I, what I would not want to see us do is err on the side of um, not participating in anything for fear of, of ever doing the wrong thing. Um, I, do, I do think it's important for us to step into the right things. Now, are, is there a way to figure out what's, what's right for us to do and what's not? Um, probably. Now, where we're not truly ever going to be political is truly structurally you know, involved in politics because if, if you think that's controversial, <laughs> imagine the larger conversation. So it's one of those things where you get community feedback. I think for, you know, for everybody that hates something what we do, there's, a, there's another group that loves it. So it's always striking that balance, which is difficult, but I think that we're still kind of finding the stride about you know, what makes sense for us to engage on a global level and what doesn't, and, and there are some things that we do and don't. And I think with that one, um, that you brought up the pop-up banner thing, and, and I'll, I'll let Tim speak to that too from a, from a structural yeah, perspective. You know, no, it's because it's a good point, and I'll, I'll talk, there's a technical side to add as well, but I think there's, um, you know, as we talk about these things internally and decide which ones we might want to participate in because we're seeing the kind of community feedback and things like that, part of it is also, do we see any sense of relevance to that is to our mission? Because part of your point was like, does this necessarily have anything to do with promoting Drupal? Right. And for some things, it's more clear than others. In the case of like the Pride Month kind of stuff, I think it was related to our deliberate efforts in favor of diversity and inclusion initiatives. With stuff like the climate strike, there was a series of other foundations, like the Linux Foundation, Mozilla, other folks in the tech space who were linking it to the sustainability of how we use technology and things like that. So we felt there was enough of a link in that case. Yeah, it actually came out of an open source conversation consortium kind of thing. Yeah. So it, it wasn't just Drupal community had decided. We and maybe it wasn't as closely related as all things should be, right? Some of these might be closer to the mark than others. Um, on the technical side, the accessibility side, yeah, that was a concern for sure. And um, one of the nice things about it, at least, though, is Neil Drum on the engineering team actually contributed back to that whole initiative and accessibility fix that got deployed out. Um, the Wikimedia Foundation um, opened an issue and was like, we need help with this. And we got to go in and say, oh, hey, we solved that for the Drupal site and share that out with the rest. So regardless of the particular message, there was at least that opportunity for a little collaboration. Yeah, I mean, this is certainly not the hill I'm dying on, but I think it's important also, like, yeah. you know, the more we talk about diversity, and it, like, uh, it's also diversity of thought, and, and you know, I think sometimes, you know, just because I'm another white guy at a tech conference, right, it's, you know, I'm, sure. I think yeah. the same way as everybody else. Um, different question for you, um, because we are GPL2, and we, you know, that significantly limits, it's a blessing and a curse, significantly limits the ability to, like, sell stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, could you talk a little bit about the Drupal Association's sort of like financial stability? Because I know, you know, it was on the brink of oblivion a few years ago. I think things have gotten better. Um, but also, like, does the DA have any thoughts about, like, stuff that we can do or that could be done? You know, like anything from an endowment to, you know, sponsored service that will help, like, avoid the next brush with oblivion uh, because like donations are great but like say Acquia gets bought next year by another VC company and like they're not a gold platinum millennium sponsor anymore yeah, yeah so uh, uh, so uh, let me let me speak to uh, uh, the you know sort of ins and outs and and uh, I advise a number of nonprofits I happen to obviously chair this particular board and uh, it, I don't want to say it is routine and common for uh, nonprofits to sort of hit points of struggle as a part of just their general trajectory, um, but it is certainly something that happens. And obviously, what you want to do is you know rescue out of it. Uh, the um, um, so and and you know my, I was not on the board at the time. Uh, it's, I'm not, by the way, I'm not abandoning the issue. I'm just saying I have, I just was not on the board at the time. Um, but what became clear to me as, as, you know, as a function of just kind of learning more about it since I didn't look through it was that, um, was that the association, meaning the staff and the board and, you know, I think more the board, 
we're, they were just making some assumptions about kind of where the future is going to be and you know where people would see value and how we should be staffed and organized and those kinds of things. And like any other business, you know, made some choices that didn't prove out as well as, as, as was hoped. Um, and uh, so I, I don't think that's any different than any, you know, sort of relatively small business. The, um, um, what we have done uh, since then, obviously, is gotten much more focused on, um, on financial dashboards and financial reporting so that we're much more keenly aware when things are not swinging the way that we want them to when, you know, when we've got various uh, revenue lines and that sort of thing. Uh, Audra is smiling because she's on the finance committee and I'm not, and she knows how little I know about this subject. You're great. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, um, so I'm not, I, I, what I can tell you is that I am not staying awake nights right now thinking how we're going to pay next month's bills. I don't think that's, I don't think that's our issue at all. Um, but I'm also not sitting here thinking, oh, we've got all this cash that we can spend. What I have learned over the last couple of years is that um, we're basically, we basically commit every dollar that we take in to, to fund an existing activity that we, take, that we have right now. So anything new that we want to do, we have to figure out how, that, how we're going to generate the revenue to make that happen. Um, and there is always a longer list of things that we would like to do than we have money for. And, and again, it's, it's both a frustration and a blessing, right? So it's kind of like from a financial side is what are the risks that we are willing to take so that we can do more and hope obviously that there's the money behind it in order to, in order to make that happen. Um, so again, in some ways it's like any other business that way. The, I think what is different about us though is it's not about how do we bring in money so that uh, we can send the staff on nicer vacations. It would be nice if they had a better benefits package uh, than we're able to offer right now. Um, it would certainly be nice um, um, if, if people understood, I think, um, that the money that we take in literally is money that we turn around and reinvest into the community, into the project, to make good things happen. So again, there's no there's no shareholder here in that sense. Um, so that's what we. And so when I think about you know kind of what are the things that we would like to do when I look at Dries's you know sort of list of development pieces when I look and I know a lot of that obviously that's going to come from the community and should come from the community in terms of sponsored contributions and people giving it their own time, and that, all of that, I think, works, but what, if, what would happen if we could accelerate that, right? Um, the, um, if I think about, you know, sort of building a, uh, an even healthier community in terms of people's commitment and, and being able to recognize contributions, if we had, you know, to go back to your question, if, if, if we had pick an amount of money, $100,000, to put into solving this problem right here, right now, we could get there a lot faster, right? So that's what I mean by, and, and I think about what the value of that is in terms of building in just a much better community. To me, that would be very cool. So that's the kind of thing that, you know, as a board, that's where we spend a lot of our time talking about how can we figure out, where, not just where we want to go next, but obviously how do we pay for it in a thoughtful way that doesn't take on too much risk. So, and I think to speak to the financial piece, which you mentioned, which is really, are you thinking around funding diversity? Are you future focused? Do you have one or two big sponsors that if they dropped out tomorrow, everything falls through? So what we think through is that it is not an effective nonprofit model for most of your funding to come from an event, which is the way that the Drupal Association was created and has, has been uh, maintained for many years. So very focused on how do we keep the funding that comes from the event but add other things to that pie of funding that are wrapped around either products or services or other ways that we can bring money in so that we're hedging against event being the, the big ticket item. And I think where we have a lot of opportunity is really 
let me let me say this first. I've never worked for a nonprofit that sold stuff, right? But I've worked for nonprofits that were very financially healthy. And so what you do is you get really effective at selling the value proposition. And so where we have a lot of opportunity is really understanding the value proposition for each of the different audiences that we connect with. And I think that we are very much aligned to make that happen um, sooner than later in even bigger ways than we have before. So we've got um, new staff around the table that bring new ideas and new financial acumen. We've got thought leaders uh, on the board that are helping us do that. And we're really connected to how do we really create a sustainable financial model, not from trying to figure out what's the widget that's going to make it happen, but what's truly valuable in the market. Audra, I don't know if you wanted to. No, I think that sums it up. So we are just about, no, we are out of time. So that's going to have to be the end. Thank and I you forgot much. to say thank you, Brad, for being a member. You get extra <laughs> question credits. <laughs> yeah, thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. thank you for our two people from Colorado. because. <laughs> it's snowing like <laughs> yeah, yeah. all right and with that we'll wrap it up thank you very much everyone thank you all. thanks everybody